Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I wanted to talk about something interesting today. Um, give me a second, see if I can pull it up here. So uh, I, I don't know how far in the future this is being watched or whatever. Let me just give you the lowdown. I mean, this is after Easter 2024 when I'm making this video, but Easter 2024 also just so happened to be Trans Visibility Day. As it turns out, it's been Trans Visibility Day since uh, 2009, I think, or something like that. And um, as happens every year, you know, the president tweets out, hey, this is Trans, Vi uh, Trans Visibility Day. Wow. You know, an acknowledgement that this is happening. Well, it happened to be Easter. And as you would expect, these people that you see on screen here, they lost their collective minds over it. They are not happy. They feel like, you know, the they feel like Easter is being canceled and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I wanted to listen to what these people had to say. Bound to be interesting. And while we listen to these people, I'm going to play uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm just kind of playing a mini game right now, so it shouldn't bother you too much. Uh, just be in the background there or whatever. In the center, we have Hank Kuhneman. If you're unfamiliar, ugh, I'm sorry, if you're unfamiliar with this crew, on the left is Gene Bailey. And on the right, I'm not, is this, this isn't Graham Allen, is it? I don't remember who this guy is. Anyway, Hank Kuhneman claims to be like a prophet of God, right? So they're about to talk to this supposed prophet of God. And he's he's like a Trump prophet. It's crazy. All right, let's give this a listen. Um, I want to show you what happened this weekend, as if you probably didn't know. Yes. Look at this graphic. Joe Biden posted today or March 31st will be by the authority vested in me in the Constitution, blah, 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 hereby proclaim March 31st as Transgender Day of Visibility. Literally the exact same thing, just about, that's been posted every other trans day of visibility. Like, okay, go on. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up through the lives and voice of transgender people throughout our nation to work towards eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. Unfortunately, that violence exists and is going to continue to exist. And Donald Trump is making it worse and has made the violence worse whether intentionally or otherwise um so it's nice you know it's a nice thought nice of biden to put out there hey let's uh recognize that you know these people experience violence but it doesn't really stop the violence exactly i'll take the win all right so pastor hank i'm gonna give you first shot at that because listen i have a feeling yeah. you may have said something in church yesterday about that. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I said, Hank Kuhneman, he's a Trump prophet. He believes that Donald Trump it was like chosen by God to be his main man or whatever, his big special fella. And he's going to come along and he's going to fix everything for everybody. And all he has to do is just, you know, Hank has to make sure that like Trump is put into office as God wishes. Last time around, in 2020, Hank Kuhneman claimed outright that, you know, um, that Donald Trump is going to win. God told him. He said, God told me Trump is going to win. And when he didn't, it didn't end well. Hank gets up on stage and says this. It's on my soundboard. Whether you think I'm false or not, if that's what you think, then you can take your opinion and you can shove it. <laughs> God, I love it to death, dude. Oh, it's fantastic. We had all kinds of crazy stuff happening from that moment. And then we had the, this one. Do you guys remember this? Strike and 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 strike. It, it, that was Apollo White, uh, Trump's spiritual advisor, quote unquote, trying to force him to be president again through prayer. Just, God, these people. I. <laughs> all right. You know what? We're not here to talk about all that. Uh, the, I, the point here, though, is that there's like a legitimate full-blown church here. There's a theology behind this, okay? I want to make that clear. I really suck at this dolphin game, and I'm going to play a different one in a second, probably. 
Plague doctor stories, and yet liberals are called snowflakes. I know. These people are so sensitive about so much stuff. Oh, my God, dude. You know that, um, from what I understand, this thing with Easter overlapping with Trans Visibility Day, this isn't going to happen f until 2086 again. But it's going to be the uh, left wokists, the the left woke mob then too. I bet, right? Doing it. God, these people need help, man, for real. Let's see. Uh, trans matter. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Logic Bees. I appreciate the the super chat. Stampede one two two. One hundred twelve years ago, the Titanic passed her sea trail uh, trials. This is a super chat you said you're going to send. And we'll be heading to wait. And we'll be heading to South Ammon, England, in the morning, and spend the upcoming week there getting ready for her maiden voyage. The Olympic will also be heading to New York. Is it a chick? Is the ship a chick? Are are ships always chicks? Can they be dudes sometimes? Do people always refer to ships as she's? Or are ships guys, gals, or non-binary pals? Is, or is there like, you know, can they be anything, I wonder? Anyway, thank you for the uh, interesting little fun fact about the Titanic's maiden voyage. The poor Titanic, man. Didn't stand a chance. Everybody said it was unsinkable, and look where it is now. Super sad. Anyway, thanks for the super chat. Today is Autism Acceptance Day. Announced by the way, really, I did not hear about that one. Okay, interesting. Wow. By the way, I want to mention, um, check out my book, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's pinned. I am making incredible progress. I'm working with somebody, and this is what I've got so far. Yeah, let me just blow it up so you can see. A couple of things need to change. Like, uh, for example, if you look in the bottom right corner... Pages on the right have my logo r flipped, like reversed. Uh, that needs to be fixed. Um, I might, yeah. So this is the foreword from Hemant Meta, And then this is the preface. So anyway, it's going to be pretty good. The Russell era, section one, a history of mistakes. Uh, I need to put this into a table. Well, I'm not really the one doing it. I'm having somebody help me with it. This is going to go into a fancy little table right here, this stuff. And uh, so anyway, yeah, the book is on its way. I have to properly format it, at which point it will be sent to the printers. That's going to, uh, well, formatting will probably take another couple of days to kind of iron out details and, and fix little things here or there. All right, you know what? I'm quitting this one. I suck at this minigame. Anyway, after those details are ironed out, I'm sending it off to the um, the book printers. I have it printed. We'll be good to go. I really want this dark matter, but man, I cannot get a time better than 141. I don't know how to beat that. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm looking at. You still can't really see. Here we are. I, I don't know how to beat that. That's a crazy good score. I really want that dark matter. Oh, well, what can you do? Anyway, check out my book. It's pinned, owamorgan.com slash book. Really appreciate it. It's coming out. And if you buy a copy of the book ahead of time, were they just in the ground just now? They were, weren't they? It looked like those guys were in the ground. If you buy a copy of the book, a written copy of the book ahead of time, I'm going to send the ebook out to you as soon as it's done, which will be soon. So you'll have a copy to, um, to read pending the arrival of the printed copy if you are interested. So anyway, give it a look. I would appreciate it very much. All right, let's listen to these Nutter Butters spread their Nutter Buttery all over everything. So this, uh, this Trump pastor here, he's going to tell us about how persecuted he is and how he was super right about Trump all along, okay? Whether you think I'm false or not, if that's what you think, then you can take your opinion and you can shove it. Thank you, Hank. Okay, let's listen. 
Absolutely. I would not pass it up at the church that uh, I have the honor to pastor here, Lord of Hosts Church in Omaha. And Pastor Gene, what I did is I made it about Jesus' visibility because really that's what it's about. That was a very purposeful statement uh, that that administration put out, picking the very day that we celebrate our res. It was purposeful. This administration purposefully picked a day. Wait, now what? What, it, what was the rest of it? That administration put out picking the very day that we celebrate our resurrected Lord. Now, some argue and say, well, that day changes every year. No, that's not the point. The point is, is it was targeted towards us Christians. <laughs> the day changes every year. Yes, the day of Easter changes every year. And I guess this dude completely forgot that uh, Trans Visibility Day has existed since 2009 yeah that just slipped his mind right okay um shoot i was really trying to go to chapter selection again but i don't think i can i think i have to play this again okay and uh, it was very, very purposeful. That's why he waited until the last minute. And it's why he chose that day, the very day of our resurrected Lord that follows on this particular year. But I will say this. I don't know why they didn't pick today. Today is April Fool's Day. Jesus, when he made it very visible, um, <clears throat> he talked about uh, transgenderism. He also talked about what true marriage was. And he um, I'm sorry. Jesus talked about transgenderism. And yeah, real clever there, Hank. It should have been April Fool's Day, yeah. Hilarious. This dude, seriously, get help, okay? This is entirely too obsessed with the trans community. Some people are just trans, and you can get over it. Like, my God, how does this affect your life in any way, shape, or form? Seriously, does this stop you from celebrating Easter? Can't we do whatever the hell we want to do? Really? He said marriage is between one man and one woman, and he defined that. They also, those that want to have... Okay, um, Jesus did say that, well, he was describing what happens. He, he wasn't, it was a, a uh, descriptive statement, not a prescriptive statement. And also, um, you know, this is like a, kind of a complicated thing because... We're dealing with, uh, you know, Jesus likely spoke in Aramaic. That's my understanding. He spoke in Aramaic. By the way, just got a, um, a, another book purchase. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I can't wait for it to come out. I just want to mention, might as well mention the star and also William. So thank you guys. Anyway, um, it's really hard to like... I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for here? It's hard to um, dig into specific words and tenses and past participles and stuff of the Bible when you're, you, you honestly don't even know like what the language intended to say. Now, for example, um, I think that Jesus spoke in Aramaic, I think. And that was translated to Greek for the Greek scriptures. Now imagine, so it's passed through like two languages now. Imagine something passing through two languages and retaining the, like the, the tenses and the participles and, and all of that junk. Just imagine with me for a second. Absolutely no way in hell. It, it's, it's insane. To think that, like, the Greek scriptures are exact. Now, according to some older texts, or I'm sorry, according to some uh, existing scholars, like Bart Ehrman, he seems to believe that we got the general gist of what the Bible was trying to communicate, but not the um, the specific messages, like when you start digging into you know, I, it, did it say I, or did it say we, or they, or she, or what did it say exactly? You can't do that. That's just stupid. Okay? Welcome, Nerico. What are these jokers going to do when Easter falls on April 1st? Funds for the feline overlords. Hell, Uh They're going to pretend that it didn't happen. <laughs> 
So stupid, man. Um, yeah, I don't remember what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of running around. I think I... Yeah, so I beat this game upwards, uh, backwards, forwards, sideways, upside down. I've done everything in this game, and including go to the very end. And now I can go through it and do chapter selection. I got every Queen's Blood card and played every Queen's Blood player there is to play. I mean, I really destroyed this game. So now we're just kind of going through and having, having fun. All right, let's keep listening to this Nutter Butter. I still have something Titanic related on the 14th. Okay, on the 14th. Well, I'll be sticking around and I'll, I'll watch for it then. Their own visibility day should have picked Halloween because after all, that's what they do is dress up in uh, costumes. So Wow, Transvisibility trans Day should have been Halloween because they dress up in costume. Can you be more of a scumbag? Like, honestly, I'm not offended by much. I'm offended by basically nothing. I, I've heard it all, okay? I, I've watched enough of this stuff to know that these people are not afraid to say some real heinous stuff. So nothing really offends me. But this is just like, this is just some scumbag stuff, man. It just, you, you sound like a scumbag when you say this stuff. If that's your goal, then you nailed it, bro. Seriously, like, what, what? what's the point of this? Why is he doing this? You know, this is a marginalized community of people who are attacked and mistreated and everything in society, and he's finding a way to continue that marginalization. Good for you. Good job, Hank. I hope you're happy with yourself. I did speak about this yesterday, and uh, I let the people know what the administration said. I let them know what the scripture also talks about. And then I went into my message, and people got saved, Pastor Gene. Uh, there was the flow of the Holy Spirit in signs and wonders and also word of knowledge. I want to say this, though. I did get a pushback from really one pastor that didn't like that I had put out this statement. Uh, of you know Jesus visibility he said uh, really that that's not what resurrection Sunday is about we should have kept the Biden thing off the table and then he began to further rebuke me and other pastors uh, for trying to be a moral majority voice in our country oh is that what he said the guy that this pastor was criticizing you for being a moral majority voice that that's what the pastor said to you I'm criticizing you because you're the moral majority so this is just like, this is a little far-fetched for me. And that's the problem with America, is that pastor's viewpoint. And I want to say, if we don't speak out, who will? And when is the right day? Um, <laughs> when is the right day? Um, I mean, you can speak your mind anytime you want. Nobody is stopping you from doing so. No one is, like, trying to gatekeep you from talking about anything at any specific time. It's... It seems to be like people like Hank Kuhneman, you know, uh, Republican extremist nutcases who complain about when people talk about issues. It's just bizarre. And then lastly, he reminds me of David. When the time was for kings to go out to battle in 2 Samuel 11, David sent the people to go out and fight. And so that's what we cannot do as pastors is let the people right. do all the fighting and we do nothing. I don't understand what the hell this dude's going on about right now. David sent people out to fight? What? All right, let me go to you, Troy. You're a pastor there south of Fort Worth. Uh, what about a trans day of visibility? Uh, what do you think of that? Oh, my God. Everybody on this show is going to hate it. We already know what they're going to think of it or whatever. Well, that was meant to be hurtful. It, it was actually, it was very strategic. It's it, it's very strategic, meant to be hurtful. It is literally, it's been the same for 15 years. Okay? No difference for 15 years. Not everything is about you. By the way, check it out. I got little Cadbury eggs. That's pretty metal, right? Anyway, let's keep listening. It was meant to hurt us somehow. Uh, I think that somehow I love it. He said, I think it was hurt, meant to hurt us somehow. Can't figure out how exactly yet, but I think it was. What our current administration needs to be aware of is that when Jesus comes back, it'll be Jesus visibility day. Okay. 
great. Well, when that happens, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. How's, how's that sound? Until then, stop freaking out and acting like you're a, a, an oppressed minority. Like, it's embarrassing at a certain point. Because every eye shall see him. And when he puts his foot on the planet Earth, he's not coming back as a six pound baby Jew like he did the first time. He's coming back to rule and to reign. And there's a huge word of repentance that's going on right now. And I think that, you know, I know that we're going to talk about uh, uh, the eclipse here within the next few minutes, but I don't. Eclipse. <laughs> The reason why God is having to declare repent, repent, repent from the heavens is because the church is not doing its job anymore. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. And Great. Do that. Go nuts. You don't have to like you're, no one is telling you that you have to see trans people if you don't want to. That it, It's trans visibility day. It's to bring attention to the problems and um, the dangers that trans people face on a daily basis. If that isn't a message that suits you or interests you, then then move on with your life. I took a little Cadbury egg out of its shell, out of the uh, the foil, set it in my lap, and it fell on the floor. So now I, I've just lost a Cadbury egg, and I'm really sad. I mean, I have like 12 of them here, so it's not that big of a deal. It's just really sad, that's all. And I know which side I'm on. Yeah, amen to that. Mark, let me go to you. Uh you know, uh, from a political side, don't you think if this wasn't intentional, because a lot of people say, oh, it just happened that way, it's that way every year. Don't you think someone in the administration would have said, you know, Joe, this may not be the right thing to do. We don't want to alienate the evangelicals. Or do you think that was even a, a passing thought? The <laughs> We don't want to alienate the evangelicals, he says. So um, the real statement he's making here is you know maybe we shouldn't talk about trans people or try to bring attention to the the pain and suffering that the trans community experiences on a daily basis because we don't want to upset religious nutcases that's really the calculation here right okay i i don't even remember what i'm supposed to be doing here what am i supposed to be doing here i think i'm just supposed to be like exploring right Maybe going to the end? Anyway. Look, I mean, either it was intentional and intended as an insult to Christians, or they are so disconnected from the fabric of our society, from religious folks in America, that there's nobody in their office that noticed that. And I think the reality is most likely they... No, Joe Biden mentioned it, didn't he, in the tweet? Wait, let me just double check. Hold on, let's see. Wait, let me see. Um, I wonder, you know, I wonder if, if Elon Musk owned Twitter when Joe Biden took over, do you think he would have given him the POTUS account the way that uh, Twitter gave him that like took it from Trump? Or do you think Elon Musk would have tried to appease Trump and refuse to give it? It would have been interesting. Okay, let's see. Um, hey! S stupid. He's being a jerk. He's scratching up the... Okay, let's see. I'm just looking here, reading through Joe Biden tweets. Let me see if I can find, like, pull up Joe Biden tweets here. Okay, let's look at the Joe Biden tweets together here real fast. See what we got going on. Um, interesting. Interesting, like, uh, colors. Uh, this is the trans flag, right? The colors of the trans flag. Women's History Month. Interesting that he put that up there, too, huh? Does that upset them somehow? What it did something happen in like this time frame like thousands of years ago that could somehow be offensive to Christians? Let's see. Wow, this dude tweets a lot. Um 
on Transgender Day of Visibility. This is a tweet from Biden. I have a simple message to all trans Americans. I see you. You are made in the image of God, and you're worthy of respect and dignity. That is hard respect, right? Hard respect right there, and I don't know what I'm looking at, but I probably shouldn't put that on screen. Let's see. Warmest wishes to Christian... Wait, I'm sorry. Jill and I send our warmest wishes to Christians around the world, celebrating the power of hope and the promise of Christ's resurrection this Easter Sunday. Huh. Weird. So he tweeted about Easter first. Weird, huh? It's a weird thing for him to do. Tweet about Easter and then... Uh, like, it's weird for him to tweet about Easter at all, isn't it? These people need to get over themselves for real. I could have sworn that... I could have sworn that, like, Biden addressed it and said, yeah, it was like, um, you know, it, it was on Easter this year, surprisingly. Trans Visibility Day was. And then it, it's nothing but, like, Easter tweets. Oh, my God, dude. Easter egg roll. This is just insane. It says, today we honor Cesar E. Chavez by carrying on the cause to which he dedicated his life. Championing the dignity and rights of every worker using nonviolence to fight for justice and standing with organized labor to build an economy that rewards work and not just well. Fascinating. So it appears as though Joe Biden did a lot more than just well, he did more than just say we recognize trans people on this day. He also recognized workers on this day and he recognized Easter. So what exactly is it that these people are complaining about? It's just the fact that he recognized trans people. That's it. They intended insult. What we're actually doing here is celebrating mental illness. We're making our society sicker and sicker intentionally. The white This is just sad, dude. The House now directly promoting this stuff. There's nothing good that's going to come of this. Well, let me show you. Uh, it wasn't that Joe just did that one post. He came back again and said trans rights are human rights, transgender day of visibility, we celebrate the joy, strength, and absolute courage. Some of the most brave people, blah, 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 blah. Wow, I guess so trans people aren't some of the bravest people, I guess, you know. People being targeted by extremists, being murdered viciously in the streets sometimes. Not some of the bravest people, I guess. And it, it, it's frustrating to this guy, I guess, that Biden would draw attention to that. Okay. So, I mean, he, was, he wasn't backing down at all. Uh, later, he finally posts um, an Easter. Hey, happy Easter. Uh, no, he posted it before all of this stuff. Are you kidding me? Really? These people are shameless. They just lie. They just say whatever they want, and people will believe them. This is just painful and sad. As if that was to kind of cover everything. Let me show you. He be God, dude, this is so stupid. Show you this clip, Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. What he had to say. Now, just brace yourself because he talked about Trans Day. Watch. Oh, boy. Brace yourself. At the Department of Education, we know that all students do their best when they're seen and they're supported. To the many transgender students across the country listening on this Trans Day of Visibility, we in the Biden-Harris administration want you to know that we see you, we support you, and we celebrate you. Hard respect. You know, I mean, it's drawing attention to the trans cause, drawing attention to the fact that people are suffering and being attacked and targeted by extremist nutcases. And what's the extremist nutcases' response to Biden drawing attention to them? Well, you'd think he wouldn't draw attention to them to appease us extremist nutcases. My God, dude. We also know it's not an easy time to be you. Walking into a classroom should be an act of hope, not an act of bravery. But every day you choose to show up as your true self. You make this world a more brave, more honest, and more free place. In your gift for seeing things as they could be, I see the promise of America. Yeah, for real. Like, think about this for a second. Just you personally, if you're like an evangelical or something, imagine with me for a second. 
if you're if you're a dude, imagine with me for a second what it would be like to walk into a classroom full of your peers dressed as a woman and presenting as a woman. Now imagine how uh, you imagine how it must be tearing them up inside to be willing to face the ridicule and and you know possible beatdowns that are forthcoming as a result of just being who they are. Just imagine for a second. That should be enough to make you realize that this really is experienced by people, and we really do need to find a way to bring attention to it and and find a way to like protect people from um you know harassment or hate or bullying or or whatever today we at the department of education want you to know that your school your community and your country are better because you're a part of it you don't just belong here we need you here from all of us here at the department of education happy trans day of visibility all right, now that was to the students. It's a little creepy here, Troy. I, I mean, that guy. What's creepy? What? I I, just, I don't want that guy talking to my kids. Why? I don't understand. What's creepy about this? No, sir. And sadly, you know, what he's actually doing is he's recruiting. What he's actually doing is he's, this is a, this is a big. Dude, are you kidding me? Really? He's recruiting, he says. This is just shameless, man. This is painful and shameless. Just disgusting. Bunch of recruitment hype. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say, all of your rebellion is born from the horrors of the adversity that you are facing, and then they are creating the narrative of look at all the look at all the crisis that has taken place. Look at all the look at all the hatred that is against you when in fact it's not true at all. This is oh no hatred. Yeah. Okay. So uh, trans people don't face any hatred. I guess is what he's saying. Right. Got it. Got it. My mistake. I thought that trans people did face hatred. You know the type that we're listening to right now. Like, we're literally listening to these people talk about mental illness and, you know, not wanting them anywhere near his kids and all this other junk. They don't face any hatred, though. Literally hating, as he says, they face no hatred. Does it get, like, more shameless and brazen than that, honestly? This is all about recruitment and sadly they're actually being successful and they know that and then of course they want to be successful on the day that we celebrate the day that jesus rose up to slap death in the face for all of us I mean, oh my god dude this is just painful and stupid come on pull it together man no it's is uh, this is absolutely on purpose so pastor hank how do we respond to this we stand up and we say we're not going to put up with it and we call it out for what it is. But where do we go from here for the, the yeah. Christian or the believer that's sitting at home that says, I didn't like it. I don't want. You know what you do? I'll tell you where you go from here. It's real simple and straightforward. This is where you go to your Easter party or whatever you pl had planned in the first place. That's where. And you live your life and you move on with it. And you know what? If you don't like the fact that there are trans people around. Sorry, man. That's what it is. Welcome to the world. You can live your life doing Easter or whatever to your heart's content. No one's trying to stop you. Go nuts. God, these people are shameless. But what do I do about it? What do they do? Well, I think first and foremost is it starts with leaders. The Bible says that when the people, you know, the leaders bravely led, the people willingly followed. So we need brave leaders and willing people. That's the first thing. Second, you got to understand that less than 2% identify as the transgender movement. So that That's fascinating, dude, that this guy like admitted that the trans community is actually very small. That's accurate. It's a very small subset of the population but somehow this guy is facing like righteous indignation he's trying to give us righteous indignation right now over how appalling it is that somebody would include the, you know the trans community in anything like it's a joke my god
Can you be a normal human being for 15 seconds, please? Well, that is a very small population. We need to love those people. We need to share the gospel with them. Well, you wouldn't need to love them, huh? Okay, could have fooled me. But what we have to understand is our government is trying to do something that most of these people don't realize, these pastors. We have, are, have, are facing right now in our country the actual onslaught of a fight against our religious liberties. That hasn't happened since our independence. So we right, you're facing an onslaught against your civil liberties. Okay, sure. And what, what civil liberty is being violated right now? Which one of your civil liberties is being violated? Literally none of them. We got to keep standing up and we got to fight for our right to be able to glorify Jesus. And Oh, I thought we were going to fight for our right to party. Okay, my mistake. And to be a See, I, that's probably the problem. I've been fighting for my right to party rather than... Oop, sorry, I got a message. I've been fighting for my right to party rather than to celebrate Easter or whatever it was he said. That's, yeah, that's the issue. I see now. We got to fight for our right to be able to glorify Jesus and to be a Christian in a God-fearing country united. Dude, get help. States of America. Amen. All right, Mark, Mark but this is a, another classic example. Elections do have consequences, <clears throat> don't they? Wait a minute. Is this them admitting that the election actually went to Biden? It sounds to me like that's what they're saying right now. Huh. Yeah, they do. And when you have the Biden-Harris administration, you knew you were going to get that stuff. And if we get that again, we're going to get that stuff. Only it's going to be more extreme because there's no need to pander to the middle at all for a reelect. It'll be much, much worse. So they're saying no more pandering to the middle. We just want to go as far right and extreme as we possibly can. Great. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And may I say right here, we're not replacing Rick Green. People are already sending in messages that why are we replacing rick green yeah rick green's another guy that comes on here he's previously a judge i think in texas or he ran for judge he was a texas state house member maybe i don't remember any anyway, he was uh involved in politics on the state level in some way you know although i kind of wanted him to want no he's he's busy doing something else so no rick is still on the show so everybody can calm down for just a moment it's all good all right, so Troy, I want to get to this next uh, this next topic. Now, let me preface this. There's a lot of talk out there, ladies and gentlemen, about this eclipse that comes on April 8th. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, wait. Is that when the eclipse is, April 8th? Wait, there, it, it, there's an eclipse. Yeah, April 8th, partial eclipse, begins in Buffalo and Niagara Falls at 2.05 p.m. with totality at... 318 p.m. Oh wow. Interesting. Okay, hang on. Eclipse path April 8th. Oh my god, dude. You know they're gonna have some crazy conspiracies about this. Hang on, let me pull this up on screen, see if we can get a Damn, I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna be in the path of totality. That's a shame. I would have to drive. I would love to see it, but you know, that's a lot. <laughs> Um, I, I am, you know, my mouse is kind of small. It's hard to see, but let me see if I can boost my mouse size. Accessibility, pointer size. Yeah, okay, there we go. Maybe you can see my mouse now. Um, in this picture, if I can, I would love to pull this picture up. I would love it. There it is. Okay, in this picture... I am roughly right here, basically right here. So I will see a little bit of the eclipse, it seems, but not like total coverage. Um, looking like 90% coverage, though. I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay, cool. That'll be, that'll be good, right? So tell, why don't you tell me now, Gene Bailey, what should I be afraid of? And you're going to get every type of of concept every theory some say oh you people are overreacting others will be like go dig a hole and climb in it uh you know there's, there's a lot so i want to i don't have time to dig into this this is where your research is going to have to help you oh my god okay but buckle up people i want to troy you recently posted a video you were on our friends with daystar 
and yet over a million people already, well over a million, already watch it. So what does that tell you about where people in America are today? Dude, what? I don't know. Like, I, I'm so lost. Dude, what the hell is he talking about? How does this relate to anything at all? Well, people are actually looking for answers because because the word is out that this is a serious warning. And uh, an eclipse is a serious warning. You know what's funny? There was an eclipse in, I think, uh, 20... When was it? 2017, maybe? And I worked for this company, and this company was based in Nashville. They had an office in Nashville, Tennessee. But... They actually, uh, they had an office where I lived in Huntington, West Virginia, and I worked at the Huntington office. Well, I got my bosses to bring me down to the Nashville office for a day. I stayed at my boss's house with her husband and, and I think she had kids. I don't remember. They were older kids anyway. Uh, and we watched it. At, we had a little eclipse party and I set a reminder in my phone all the way back then. Remind me in 2024. I looked up when the next one was. And that reminder exists in my phone to this day. So I don't know about these guys, but I've known about this eclipse for like seven years already. I mean, uh, you know, trucks are not being allowed to be able to drive. And like schools are being let out. The National Guard is being released. Uh, What? That's never happened before at an eclipse before. What the hell are you talking about? That's never happened at an eclipse. Like, it's a single location. Like, one spot on the earth. Like, one city is going to experience the eclipse, and only one, apparently, is how he views it. What the hell is going on right now? I mean, uh, you know, trucks are not being allowed to be able to drive, and, like, schools are being let out. The National Guard is being released. That's never happened before at an I have no clue what he's going on about. Eclipse before, because there is a sobering agenda or a sobering word, man, that actually goes with this. And even ungodly people are picking this up. The church, however, I guess you could call me ungodly, right? I'm like a non, well, at the very least, I'm not like this kind of person right here. So one might call me ungodly, right? What am I picking up exactly? I'm not picking. I'm struggling to understand what the hell you're going on about right now. Even though we're late bloomers to this revelation, we have finally come into agreement that God does speak through the sun and the moon and the stars, as Jesus prophesied in Luke chapter 21 that he would. And we're actually starting to see that these kinds of messages, you cannot deny them and you cannot ignore them. So, uh, I mean, we've known about this eclipse for like seven years. <laughs> I mean, that's how long I've known about it. How long has everyone else known about it? The scientific community can calculate eclipses out like hundreds of years. Like, I don't know what you're going on about right now. This is a sign? Oh, you need to know what it is. All right, so we're going to hit just some of the highlights uh, of this, folks, here, watch at home. I want you to do your own research and dig into the Bible yourself. And you just... Okay, do your own research on the Bible and what it has to say about solar eclipses. Right, okay. You, you quoted a great scripture in Luke 21. You also quoted Genesis 1:14. We talk a lot about heavens to denote seasons in the calendar and days or years, but you reminded us that the, the first thing mentioned is that the heavens will bring us is signs for those that might not pay attention to all of that. What are the, why are these signs significant and what denotes a sign? Okay. So a sign of the end is, I think, like darkness, a time of darkness or something. Also, there's a QAnon thing where they believe that there are going to be like 10 days of darkness. And it's like a QAnon prophecy, if you will. And this QAnon prophecy, the idea behind it, they believe that they've interpreted it, QAnoners, they've interpreted this prophecy as meaning no internet. There are going to be internet and power outages. But I guess these people are kind of running with the literal darkness thing here at the moment. Okay. So, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry. Signs of the times. One more thing here. There is literally, there isn't a moment 
in human history, including now, when quote unquote signs of the times aren't happening. We are getting signs of the times as we speak. We have we have always Jesus was getting signs of the times when he was on earth. Okay. Signs of the times are kind of vague. It was like earthquakes and pestilence and war. You know, there have been, uh, what was it? I think 273 years of peacetime in the past, like, 10,000 years. How many years of peace in human history? Two, 268 of the past 3,400 years. Humans have been entirely at peace for 268 of them. There has always been war, like since day one. But okay, let's keep listening to this conspiracy here. Sign is is a prophetic declaration, and it's it literally spells something out for us. And so, whenever in in Genesis one fourteen, as you just mentioned, on the fourth day that God created the material universe. He didn't create the sun and moon and the stars for light. Remember, he already had light on the first, second, third day. It was already there. But rather, he created them for signs, seasons, days, and years. It's interesting he says that. He's giving us this bizarre-ass backwards interpretation of the book of Genesis or whatever. But, uh, I don't know, Jehovah's Witnesses have a really fascinating interpretation of it, too. Um, They're old Earth creationists. They kind of subscribe to something called gap theory where you don't know how much time passed between you know um, day one and like day six or day seven or whatever you don't know how much time passed between each day technically it could have been thousands of years because one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day with god or whatever well anyway uh, I guess this guy has like a completely different ass backwards like interpretation of it. Fascinating. Oh, and by the way, the the Bible actually like it, it's not really super clear about this, but according to the scholars that I read on this subject, I I'm you know this isn't me speaking. This is scholars speaking about it. The early. Um, the early manuscripts of Genesis make it clear that light and darkness and water existed before God did anything. The earth was formless and void, and God was there. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. And the word season there, of course, is moedim, and it actually means prophetic appointment or the, or the prophetic timing of things. So God uses the heavens as a supernatural timepiece to show us what we ought to do. It's Dude, I have no idea what he's going on about right now. Always been like that, and uh, the church is just now catching up with it, and I'm very, very grateful for it. All right, so we all know if we've paid attention at all, there was a, a, uh, an eclipse in uh, 2017. Yeah, that one. That went from the upper northwest to the southeast, and uh, now we've got this one coming in. So kind of quickly run down what- So many eclipses, it's super scary, right? What are we gonna do with all these eclipses? What is so significant about these two eclipses? Literally nothing is significant about these two eclipses. Well, thank you, sir. I, first of all, you know, the idea, and we, we might make the mistake of thinking, hey, this happens all the time. This has happened eight times in the United States. This next one will be the eighth time since 1776. What, the eighth eclipse? Is that even true? How many eclipses have there been in the U.S. since 1776? Why did he pick 1776, by the way? I understand that that's when um, I think the Declaration of Independence was signed, but the Constitution wasn't ratified until 1787. We still had years and years of bloody war to fight. I think we had uh, we fought war from 1776 to 1781, or 1781 to 83. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like there have been nine, apparently. Um... Just from the cursory 
look here that I've got, I think there have only been nine in the U.S. Okay, so I don't know what what's significant about that. And the last time that we had a full solar eclipse that went from one end of the nation to the other that only touched America was in fact in 1776, which of course is the year of the birth of our nation. Holy Christ, dude, we are going down the rabbit hole right now. This guy is giving us some wild conspiracy theories right now. So this is a national word, and whenever God speaks through the sun, through these eclipses, he's always talking to a nation, okay? So it's like when God wants to speak a national word and get, get their attention in the heavens, he uses the sun to do that. Um, the significance of these two eclipses is, number one, they are seven years apart, and the first one, of course— Oh, and seven is a significant number, right? Oh, my God. He's doing numerology. Look, Jehovah's Witnesses did, went down this path. Didn't work out for them. Millerites went down this path. The Bible students did. People have gone down this path like a billion times. You don't want to go down this one. You're go it's going to end in failure, without a doubt. Of course. Um, w w happened on the first of Elul on the Hebrew calendar, and that means the month of repentance. And 40 days after the after the first day of Elul is Judgment Day. And so that's why it's the sign of Jonah the prophet, because on the first of Elul, way back uh, 700 some odd years before King Jesus, there's the great Assyrian eclipse, and that was the... King Jesus, interesting. It, like, that's unique, because not all Christians believe that Jesus is king. They think he's Lord... But I, I don't think that they believe that he's taken the throne of God over yet, necessarily. I think some believe that he's set to take the throne over after he comes back. But okay, go on. The day that Jonah walked into there. And so they got, they knew exactly what the message was, was that they had 40 days to repent. So we see this happen. And then as this hour and 33 minute event took place, the totality of that of that shadow crossed seven cities that was called Salem. And that speaks of seven years of peace. Now, where it... Be so, wait, wait. The last eclipse spoke to seven years of peace? Or... I'm trying to understand. This is like a winding conspiracy theory, as all of them are. But, boy, is this fascinating, dude. I love these conspiracies to death. They're so entertaining began was Salem, Oregon, as you can see, and where it ended was at Fort Sumter, which is where the Civil War began. So, Wow, that's a sign right there. That's undeniable, right? The eclipse started in Fort Sumter, where the Civil War began. Dead giveaway that Jesus is king. It ends where the Civil War begins. Wow. Now, eight years later, which is going to be on the 8th of April, we have another eclipse that goes all the way across our nation, and it begins at Eagle Pass, Texas, and that was where the last Confederate general buried the— Dude, this is insane. Holy Christ, this is nuts. I thought I was, like, kind of, like, halfway joking around about the conspiracy theory stuff. No, this is real. This is, like, more real than I'm comfortable with last confederate flag that's called shelby and it's you know shelby park is on you know all the news today well that's that's actually named after a confederate general a, a confederate general called shelby and friends this is where the civil war actually ended so the first okay so seven years ago one came in where the civil war started and this one is going out of the U.S. where the Civil War ended? And there are seven years in between each? What the hell is happening right now? This one ended where the Civil War begins. The second one begins where, this, where the Civil War ended. And then they both go all the way across the nation, and this one actually goes over seven cities called Nineveh. Now, it actually goes over eighth one in Nova Scotia, Canada, but it... Be wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Didn't this guy tell us that this is um, the only time an eclipse has ever, only ever touched the United States? I thought it, if it goes through Nova Scotia, Canada, then it doesn't count anymore. 
there are like holes all through this conspiracy theory. It begins with Jonah, Texas, and then it goes through Nineveh, Texas, and then it passes through seven cities that's actually called Nineveh. And it's like okay, I don't know if he's aware of this. It sounds like he's not, just in case he's watching this. Almost certainly not, but, you know, just in case. You realize that people can name towns, right? All of the mayors all along the path, if they wanted, could name it Nineveh. Or hell, they could rename their towns from Nineveh to, like, I don't know, what's a non- Jewish name. Um, oh, God. A lot of our names are actually of Jewish origin. Sarah, John, um, James. God, I'm trying to think of non-Jewish names. We could name the town, um, I don't know, Romana or something. Just the first thing I see on my screen here. We could get them all to rename it Romana. Would your conspiracy stick then? Like, what is that? It's the sign of Jonah the prophet that says, you need to repent. You have to repent. It's a word of repentance, no matter how you look at it. And the threat is actually civil war. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about that, but it speaks very clearly of civil war to me. Again, how uh, where it begins and where it ends, both of them speak of uh, civil war. Uh, um, Shelby uh, Park is on the news every single day today, and it's about the difference between state rights and federal rights to be able to guard our, our state that is called Texas. I'm sorry, what? Dude, this guy really needs to get help, seriously, like... I'm kind of joking around here, but this is like really, really wild shit. He has gone down the conspiracy rabbit hole way, way too far at this point. They both cross over in the land of Lincoln, right? right. Um, in the, they cross over in the land of, oh my God, you're kidding. Wait, in the land of Lincoln. I thought he meant Lincoln, Nebraska, but no, they don't. They don't cross over in the land. What does he mean the land of Lincoln? The two, the one from 2017 and the one from 2024 cross over below St. Louis. Um, trying to make this out. Is this map even accurate? I'm getting the impression it's not. Look at this. There's a, there's a Memphis, apparently. Like, I don't know. I don't think this is... Right. This map does not look right at all. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it is right. Am, am I missing something? Does this look like a correct map? Memphis should not be that far south, should it? Or, or Nashville? This is wild, dude. Sorry, off topic. Do you know JW girls are allowed to wear pants? Men can have beards and they can talk to disfellowship people again. I did. I heard about that. Yes, I put out a video about it, actually, I believe. Um, just released the other day. Check my channel, this channel, and uh, you should see it. Watch through the whole announcement. Anyway, this is really weird, man. Breaking. There's an earthquake near Taiwan. Really? Is there? Earthquake near Taiwan. Oh, no. 6.4 earthquake. That's not good. That means they're going to be facing some tsunamis, probably. Some intense ones, almost certainly. Sign of the times, guys. Sign of the times. Called Texas. They both cross over in the land of Lincoln. Right. right. Um, all these things speak of our nation being split. And I think that this is a warning. Dude, I have no idea what he's even going on about right now. Warning that God Almighty is speaking, saying, repent, get your act together, or the nation is going to be split apart. All right. Well, let me ask you this uh, that I don't, uh, I mean, because I know you hit the, the real highlights there as we went down the path. Why do you think, uh, and I'm just, this is just your opinion, obviously, because you probably don't know. Why are we seeing so many parks start to, to shut down? We see cities. We've seen parks shut down? What are you talking about? I haven't seen any parks shut down. That are already proclaiming, uh, you know, don't come to our city, stay home. 
uh, th there's it's ridiculous what people are saying. Well, there's going to be all these people uh, there in Texas where um, one of the eclipses coming through south of Fredericksburg in Colleen. They're already declaring, you know, some emergency. It's like an eclipse d does just doesn't do that. I mean, we have gone through. It doesn't. What, like, what do you, what is this guy even talking about? I don't know of any parks that have been shut down. Eclipses before. So why would you, why do you think we're seeing all of these people react? And I say these people, I'm saying government agencies, cities, counties, governments. Why are they reacting this way? What, which ones? You didn't even name any. I'm, look, it's possible that maybe there are some government agencies out there that are like reacting by uh, what shutting down parks i guess for the eclipse i'd venture to guess that would be if they are even are doing that i'd venture to guess it's because they don't want like tourists coming in and like like i don't know clogging up their roads and swarming them and stuff like that would make a huge mess that's my best guess i'm not understand like where's the conspiracy here how does how's he going to take this from where it is now to conspiracy land. It's already in conspiracy land, but I'm just trying to figure out where it goes from here. Well, this is the playbook of the globalists today, and it works like this. Globalists. If we can, if we can declare that there is a crisis, then we can bring whatever sanctions and compliance that we demand. Dude, what? It's an eclipse. It's not. Are you serious? There was literally just a global crisis. COVID. And you're telling me that an eclipse is going to be used as a as a global crisis as a premise to what lock people down or like what I don't know. What the hell does he think is going to happen here? I am so like lost. And I think that they constantly, I think that we're constantly having things piloted and test driven to us to see what the compliance is going to be. And of course, it's all in the name of peace and safety. But then as the word of God says, we all know the sudden destruction comes. So to be able to, to say, no, you know, this shadow is too scary. Mm, peace and safety. It's all in the name of peace and safety. Has literally anybody said peace and or safety? It's in the name of peace and safety for them to close the parks for the eclipse or whatever has anybody said that get a grip on reality seriously this is insane i can't believe they invited this on this dude on for this well i can't believe it actually but usually they're a little more veiled with their conspiracy theories and they're not like so open about it like usually they they kind of come in and and Oh my God, dude, I keep like, um, I can't move. There we go. Usually they're a little more veiled about it. Like they'll shout out to QAnon conspiracies, but they won't come out and say, I believe that QAnon is real and it's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. Charlie Earth Roast, we had a solar eclipse in central Texas, October 14th, 2023. It was an annular solar eclipse, but why did they not go crazy over that one? It's a good point. Haven't thought about that. Interesting. Well, I mean, like, honestly, I don't think that, like, I think they're just looking for a reason to go crazy over something. I think they're looking for a reason, a reason to convince their members that the end is here and that if they don't, like, donate to them, then, like, everyone's going to die or something. Just a fear-mongering tactic. Get people scared enough, they'll do anything for you. Our towns here that are sending these notices out are small. I'm from Marble Falls, and we're preparing for 100,000 extra people and no sell or intern. No sell or intern? Yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me. I can totally see small towns not having any way to handle the massive number of tourists coming in. That, that makes sense to me. That checks out. But no, like it, it can't just be that. It has to be some ridiculous, nonsensical conspiracy theory. Like, bro, come on, pull it together. Scary for us, so we're going to have to bust out the National Guard. You're not allowed to go to parks. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to drive a truck. Okay, that's not what's happening. Truck that no one has ever seen anything like that happen before. 
No, and it's not happening now. Are you kidding? For but this is the new norm that we are faced uh, that we are faced with, and I think it's up to us if we're going to drink that Kool Aid or not. Yeah, I agree. My <laughs> they drank Kool Aid a long time ago. For the record, my audience will likely know this. Um, that's a reference to Jim Jones and what he did with his, uh, you know, with his cult, and it was Flavor Aid that he used. It was a knockoff brand of Kool Aid, actually. Uh, not not the real thing so mark let me bring you into the conversation here i mean you oh please anything to get this dude off screen yeah i'm sure you've seen this like i have all these people shutting city government down and telling people to stay home and get rations and you know dude i uh, what get rations no i haven't heard anything about that what is, what are you talking about the government is instructing people to get rations for for an eclipse what okay hold on now i gotta look this up government instructs rations eclipse i don't i don't even know what to oh okay so i guess it's saying like get extra gas in your tank because there are going to be people like swarming to your town probably and you you know you might not be able to like find it an open gas pump that day so if you would be normally filling your gas tank that day the 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 eclipse happens and fill it the day before instead that's what it seems like to me yeah it's tourism and community leaders in the path of totality from texas to maine yeah they trucked in extra fuel and porta potties urge residents and visitors to be prepared is do people it like it's an event people want to see it what the hell are you talking about rations what city government down and telling people to stay home and get rations and you know oh my god dude i thought that the easter story was the story we were going to be listening to but this is this is insane what we're hearing right now this is nuts i love it i love everything about it no at least we gave some uh, at least we gave the trans community some visibility right store up four months of food and water i mean it what okay what government agency said that who said that it, your first remembrance is of here we are at y2k again i mean they're they're kind of that sort of fatalistic uh predictions why do you agree with troy what possible reasons would there be for this if it's just an eclipse passing by dude what are you talking about like i haven't heard about any of this stuff happening i'm so lost did any of this really happen or is he just completely full of shit? I, I looked, I didn't see anything like that. Yeah, I actually think it's nefarious. And the issue is that government is practicing over and over how to get us to respond in an obedient way when they want us to just stay home and shut down, uh, not really communicate, not be out in public with each other. They did this on a large scale with us during the COVID panic. That was all manufactured. It's now been proven. And this is just another test of the same kind of system, in my opinion. How about you? Nothing's happening right now. What are you talking about? You, Pastor Hank, I mean, there are prophecies out there about people saying don't go outside on the 8th. Uh there are? Who? Who prophesied that? Who, which um, prophet, supposed prophet, or, or which pastor said don't go outside on the 8th because it's like the end of days or whatever? Which one? Tell me who. Give me a name. It didn't happen. It's bullshit. All of it. And where am I supposed to go? Uh, is that or is that a overreaction? Do you think there's more to it? I just kind of want to get you to weigh in on the conversation. God, this is this is just painfully stupid. Here. Well, again, I probably have a different uh, perspective than maybe what a lot of people want to hear. I think what happens is God. No, no, I love you. lay it on me, Hank. God does give signs in the heavens and he gives wonders in the earth. There's blood, fire, vapor of smoke, Acts 2 says. So there will be sometimes natural things that happen. Some of that is the hand of the devil responding, wanting people to think that somehow it's always God that's doing those things. Then you see man getting involved for what you're talking about here to bring certain fear control uh, as we should learn our lesson through Y2K. And then how about the blood moon craze that those that wrote the books and perpetrated the blood moon, I'm not saying it wasn't legit with the... I have no idea what he's talking about, the blood moon. Um, 
people usually refer to lunar eclipses as blood moons because the moon turns red. Is that what he's talking about? Because the earth is like blocking the uh, like the sun from hitting the moon and the light is kind of bouncing off of the uh, atmosphere in the earth. And uh, kind of turning it red for the, it, so the moon is red during a lunar eclipse for the same reason that we have sunsets basically. Now, wh what is he talking about? Blood moon sign. But let's face it, they made all the money while people were panicking and in fear. We have to wait. Who made all the money? To remember something, no matter what sign God gives, as long as the Holy Spirit is in the earth, including the Antichrist, according to Scripture, is restrained by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as long as God's Spirit's in the earth, He always has a redemptive plan. That's why Luke 21, when it talks about the sun, the moon, and the stars, nations in perplexity, waves, you know, roaring, uh, and He talks about men's heart failing for fear. He says, look up, your redemption draws nigh. Dude, these people need help. In the same way, when we look at this eclipse, we have to understand it is about God's redemptive plan because His Spirit is here in the earth. What's a redemptive plan? When God brings a warning, when God calls for something, it's always to bring a plan of help and plan of hope. People talk about Nineveh. They talk about Jonah. But you know what? There was a point when they repented in Nineveh, and Jonah didn't like the results that his word was not received because the people repented. God changed his mind, and Nineveh had a second chance. I believe all these signs are pointing to that God is saying, America, I'm giving you another chance. It's no coincidence, April 8th to... Dude, I, I I'm so lost. So the first guy said that there was significance to the fact that the eclipse was passing over the town or over eight towns named Nineveh and one town named Jonah or something, right? He said there's some kind of significance to that. And Hank is saying that I, I guess Hank is assuming that that's like necessarily a bad thing. And he's saying that like those towns repented. So this might not be the end. Pentecost Sunday is 40 days, and I believe we're going to see a glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Last, I want to say this. People talk about repentance. What about the 2016? What about the 2020? Uh, nationwide repentance movements of some of the great leaders that hundreds of thousands gathered. Did that make a difference, God? Yes, it did. And if one man, Moses, could change the outcome and a destiny of a nation when they were corrupt and they deserved to be wiped out, one man, Moses, stood up and held God to his redemptive plan and to his covenant. And that's what this man is doing during this eclipse. Okay, I, I am lost. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Right, That's what what man is doing. Is he talking about himself? Is he saying he's repenting or, or, or something? I don't understand. Redemptive plan. It, it feels like these people are just saying words to scare the shit out of people. But... The words don't make any sense when put next to each other. This is just bizarre. And to his covenant. And that's what this man is doing during this eclipse. You will remember, God, your covenant over this nation. And you will remember your redemptive plan. And you will show your goodness and mercy for the sake of this country and your glory and the harvest that's coming. All right. Okay, wow, that was wild. So, Troy, I'll let you follow up to that. I mean, what, what's the... Uh... Oh, God, how do you follow up on that? That is nuts, dude. Wow, we're listening to a, a brand new full-blown conspiracy theory be formed out right in front of us. I love everything about it. This, that's fascinating. Why haven't I heard any conspiracies thus far about like the uh, eclipse. This is actually a pretty mainstream source, too. This is on TV, like TV channel, like cable packages. Get this TV show that we're watching right now. Uh, this is on uh, the Victory Channel. It's on, wh what's his name? Kenneth Copeland's Victory Channel. Absolutely fascinating, man. Well, anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, don't forget to check out my book. It's pinned, but it's owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd greatly appreciate that. Also, if you want to see the rest of this, 
go to my Owen Unfiltered YouTube channel, 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, every Wednesday and Thursday. I sit here and we hang out and listen to these nutter butters, spread nutter buttery all over everything. Uh, just this same setup, same style. So it's pretty interesting, I think. But yeah, all right, I'm out, guys. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you guys uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow morning.